Hey everybody, it's Brian Burns. Welcome to this episode of the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling podcast. Today we're going to be talking about activity and accomplishment, the magic formula. And managers have a different view on this than sales reps. And what's always worked for me is working on the right opportunities at the right time, not just blind activity. And every time I hear a manager interviewed, I hear about blind activity because they assume that people are going to work on the smartest things, but they, they have no way of judging that. They have no way of testing that. But that knowledge, that decision point of what to work on is the key thing. Uh, it, it, it's different if like you're doing door to door, as long as you're in the right neighborhood, you get a higher probability because, you know, people are all of similar economic stance because they live in that neighborhood. <laughs> you know, you don't see a $5 million house next to a, a 50K house. And, and that a birds of a feather type thing. And I think too often today, and this is what I hear mostly from reps, is that managers are distracting them with blind activity. So if 30 calls doesn't work, let's try 50. Well, why not take a step back? Why not say, how do we get the best and the most likely people and go deep and broad on them? And this, there is a little bit of math to it. A heuristic, a heuristic is like an algorithm, but a heuristic is a set of best practices. Uh, we determine the weather through a heuristic. It's not really that much of a mathematical algorithm because it takes human Interpre interpretation, as well as all the mathematical analysis. And the same was true when they were trying to come up with a program to beat the chess players. When you had a human intervention to focus the computer on the right things, it worked much better. Of course, now today we have you know such uh, processing power that you can go through the billions of alternatives. Now in sales, we only have time. We have time and our skills, and we have to apply our time and our skills to the things that are most likely going to close. This is not factory work. This is still a brain, person-to-person -person work. And if we get distracted by activities, we don't accomplish anything, but we do have to do activities. We still have to contact somebody and talk about something. And my point is that usually we're pretty good at that. We just have to find the right person at the right time and talk about what they care about. And that's really what Start the Conversation, Get the Meetings course is all about. You can find it at b2brevenue.com. Hit the training tab. Uh, check out the courses and then schedule a time with me if you'd like to talk it over. And did I tell you the prices are going up? Ugh, I have to do it. I'm telling you, I put so much into this. December 31st will be the last day you get these prices. Now, they've all been out for a year. So there's 25 hours of office hours and tons of one-on-ones in the course. So you get real world examples and you get an example of how I can help you focus on the right thing in the right way, because I've been doing this forever, <laughs> you know, and this is really what's working today, not what worked five, 10, 20 years ago, the same BS that everyone's been rehashing. They, they spent five years in sales and they think they learned it all. Uh, I'm telling you, I've learned probably more in, about sales in the last five years than I did in the previous 25 years. It's like when you really make the practice of it and you have to do it. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to sell. You have to become good at it. Otherwise, you don't eat. So sign up for the courses. If you want to get this price, lock it in. You lock it in for the full year. Now, there's going to be a couple of uh, freebies and incentives to do this in January. One is if you order either of the, any of the courses that, that are charged items, not the free ones. So to start the conversation, get the meeting, or closing the complex sale, I'm throwing in this questions that sell course, which is a $500 value uh, free. Uh, and the instructions on how to do that are in the office hours in the courses. So make sure you're checking them out. It's still, even if you are a current member of the courses, check out this week's office hours and you'll see the instructions on how to do it. Make sure you follow the instructions. Do not hit submit 
if the balance is above zero, uh, enter the coupon code uh, before you enter it. Do it on a computer, not on your smartphone, so you can see it and go through it uh, properly. Uh, no refunds. You'll have to deal with your credit card company. Uh, you know, I'm giving it away. Come on, don't make me work to give you stuff for free here. But that course really has helped people focus on the problem you solve and how to communicate your value without talking about you. Imagine that, talking about them. So let's get into this interview. I'll sum it up at the end. Let me know what you think. And I really appreciate everybody listening in, connecting up with me on LinkedIn and sharing the content. I'm putting out some funny videos. Make sure you're checking out uh, the podcast company page, The Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling. And if you like my uh, little walk and talk videos, I'm putting them on YouTube as well. So just search Brian Burns Sales on YouTube. You'll, you'll find them there. Hey, Chris, thanks for joining us today. Is a way you're getting started. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, excited to be here. Uh, just started as the director of sales development over at Signal FX. Um, before that, I was uh, head of North American sales development over at Smart Recruiters and uh, you know, worked at, a, at another startup in, in the financial services industry before that. But uh, real, uh, real excited to talk about uh, you know, how you can have a big impact when, when you're joining a new uh, company and, and uh, taking on running sales development. Well, let's get into it then. What's your approach? Yeah, so you know, I, I think what everybody kind of sees on, on their first day, especially if they're a sales development leader, is you, know, you walk in – you walk into a situation that is, uh, you know, always far from from your vision of perfect, right? But um, uh, normally, you know, the team's excited, they're fired up, and uh, you, generally, I, I see this phenomenon where you know, call volume goes up, people are calling like crazy, and you know, pe- <laughs> people are like, "Oh, wow, you really got the team fired up," you know. Um, but obviously, there's there's a few problems with that, right? There's there's usually, especially if you're in the startup world. You know, no reporting structure, little to no process. Salesforce is probably a complete mess, right? And you probably don't actually have any way of measuring your metrics. Like you have an unknown connect rate, and 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 honestly, like you know, when you really dig into what calling like crazy is, you know, I, I at my last company it was 120 calls per week across, you know, a team of four SDRs at the time, which, <laughs> you know, if, if, um, if, if you're an SDR listening in, you know, that's not a crazy call volume, right? No, no. What, the, you know, changes with every company, but 50 a day, it seemed to be the common number. I don't know if that's still true. There's all kinds of technology and what do you call a, a call? Is it connect? Is it just a dial or? Right. Yeah. You know, it's a, in, in terms of, you know, the, the language, you know, a call is, is an attempt, right. An actual dial. But I, I think, you know, it, you, you kind of hit on this, right. Where, you know, it's different in every company, but I think the question that I've encountered in the past, you know, from, from other senior sales leaders is, you know, what, you know, why isn't the team motivated the call and, you know, how can we motivate them? And really, I, I don't think that motivation's the answer. I, I, I had a, um, an old boss who used to say, you know, kids look for motivation. Adults just go to work, and um, you know. <laughs> um, and I, I think that th- this is a big piece where where just sales training falls short, right? It's 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 more motivational speaking than than actionable advice. Um, but but you know, how do we fix our our calling problem, right? Um, you know, we've got numbers to hit. You know, our reps have to hit their quota. Um, you know, and 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 we have to build pipeline, right? So. What do, what do we actually do? Um, and and what we did at the last company was we came up with a, a vision of success for for what we wanted, and that was to to have our sales reps, um, you know, on the same page and know exactly what to say at the right time whenever they get on the call with somebody uh, every time. Yeah. Um, which I'm sure you can imagine that's that's a pretty lofty goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because the person on the other line doesn't have a script, so our script can, it, it trees out real fast, right? You know, there's all kinds of things people can say and people, you know, trying to re flip pages or screens or whatever to find the right answer. Mm, not that predictable. 
Yeah, and, and every company is going to have a different script, and, and I'm not really going to focus on how to have a good script and a good conversation structure today, but, but actually relate it up to, uh, to the data. Because if you're, if you're a leader, you've, you, you've got to work with the data in order to, to drive your team. Because you know, there's, there's the old Peter Drucker quote, I think it goes something like, if you, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, or at least it was attributed to him. But, but I, I really do think that that uh, uh, applies, especially with, with call and activity reporting. So in the beginning, like the first question, um, uh, or step rather that, that we, that, uh, that we encountered was, you know, how to set up our, our robust call reporting. Right. So, you know, all of the SDRs, um, are going to have a different take on, you know, why, why they're not successful or why they're not as sexual, as successful as they can be. And really, once you set up your reporting, you can answer, you know, certain questions like, you know, are their concerns valid, right? About, you know, connect rates being bad or, you know, people not picking up. Um, and then when they do connect, you know, how often are they actually successful on a call? Yeah. And, you know, and then more importantly, when they connect and are unsuccessful, what went wrong? So the step that, w- you know, that we took to approach this was, uh, bucketing our call disposition. So a call disposition is, you know, like when you actually call, re, you know, call somebody and they pick up, you know, is that an answered call? Is it a no answer? Did you leave a voicemail? You know, did you get a, a gatekeeper? You know, whatever, all of the different situations, but, but actually bucketing them into a couple, uh, reportable, uh, metrics that you can, that you can build in the sales force. And I'm not going to get into the, the technical side of that today, but I'll, I'll speak Please. to what we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want we don't want people falling asleep, right? Well, let, let's start a little bit uh, earlier in this. What is the outcome that the SDR they're getting meetings for BDO for A, right? Is that the outcome? Yeah, that's that's okay. that's correct. And, and how many meetings do they have to get per week to make their number? Yeah, so so um, at, at this company or in the past, it doesn't matter either one. Yeah, so I I would say probably you know a meeting a day is, uh, is what we aim, is what we aim to get. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, but how do you, how do you work backwards for, from that? Right. You have to have your activity metrics so that you can, you can build your funnel. And most SDR leaders I talk to, they don't know their funnel because they haven't done this exercise, but you talk to any VP of sales, they can tell you their deal funnel. Um, like, you know, like the, they know it like the back of their hand. So that's, uh, that's what I want to equip people to do, or at least get them thinking about how can I do this? Like what steps do I need to take to, to build my activity funnel so I can forecast, you know, is our team doing enough activity? Are they doing the right activities to hit their number? Yeah. Um, and how many of them aren't making that the one a day, the five a week? Is that Right now, it's 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 not a it's not a huge issue. I think we're right where we need to be. But yeah. you know, when when I've started in the past, at, at, you know, at other companies, it's it's not even something that's necessarily being measured. So I I think that this this talk track or this this uh, this talk that we're having is really going to equip somebody that's walking into a early stage startup where things like success might not even be defined. Like, how do you bring process to to a situation like that? Okay, I'll let you go then. Keep going. Yeah. So, uh, coming back to the, to the buckets, right. You want to, you want to look at calls attempted. So for us, that was a dial has been made, you know, regardless of, of outcome, right. Uh, the next one was a call connect. So a prospect actually picked up the phone and then a conversation would be the next one. So that is any call that for us, it was any call that lasted three minutes or longer. And then the last one was success. So you either booked a, a demo or a discovery call or a, or a follow-up meeting for yourself. Um, and, and you can build this in Salesforce. Like I said, any uh, sales ops uh, admin or Salesforce admin work uh, worth their salt should be able to, to build it for you. But once you've actually got your, your call uh, reporting right and you've got it bucketed and you've built reports on it, you can start to diagnose the problem, which is the next step. Uh, and for, for us in the past, you know, it, it was connect rate. So how often did someone pick up the phone when we called? So once we implemented this, what we saw was that as call volume increased, connect rates actually went down. So, you know, on, at first glance, it's like, what's going on? <laughs> why, are, why are things getting worse? You know, as people are working harder, um, you know, they're dropping the ball. What's, what's the reason? And you know, what we were able to find out in this particular case was that it's because people were calling more uh, than in the past, right? They had been doing more outbound. Uh, but they, in the past, they had also been cherry picking only the hottest leads. So yeah. it helped tease out that insight that, hey... Um, you know, the connect rate looks like it's, it's, uh, not improving, it's getting worse, but that's because 
people are actually being driven to to do outbound prospecting where you're going to have a much lower connect rate. So it helps you prove that to uh, to anybody that's going to be looking at your metrics and, and help inform uh, what your team's doing day to day. Now, are these self-reporting or is it uh, are they unaware that this is being monitored? So it's 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 I, I would say it's in between. Like the rep is required to book a, a disposition when they get off the call, right? Yeah. And and ideally, you're using some kind of sales acceleration tool. You know, there's a ton out there that allow for this, but when they complete a call, you know, they just need to be required to to mark the disposition. So there's some element of <laughs> of uh, honesty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and and if if people aren't or if people are trying to game they're called as physicians, you've got a bigger problem than, (laughs) than, uh, than I can help you with. Um, but, but assuming that that is true, then, uh, it should be automated in, in the background. Yeah. I mean, because what I've seen is when that, when people get, um, you know, when you count something and you tell somebody you're counting something, you have an effect on what's getting counted. It's, you know, in every experiment, it's, I think the Stewart effect or something they call it is once people know that they're monitored, they will adhere to what you want to see. Same as forecasting. You know, you want 300% of your pipeline, boom, there you go. And all of a sudden, everyone's happy until the end of the quarter, and then all of a sudden, you know, nobody makes their number, even though they had 300% in their pipeline. It's just, you know, as a rep, I was always frustrated with the activity focus versus the accomplishment focus. Yeah, I, exactly. And and that's why the, the next piece I'm going to speak to is actually about the success rate. And, um, and I hope that, you know, once we talk through this, it'll, it'll kind of show how it creates a virtuous cycle if you're measuring this, because I think that it actually equips the rep to understand that, Hey, like now that we have visibility into our funnel, uh, I'm going to want to number one, record stuff so that it's accurate. So that, um, our reporting, our reporting tells me what I, what I need to do to be successful. Right. Um, because, you know, working back, you know, through, uh, through the funnel, um, I know that I need to make, you know, 50 calls a day because that's going to get me, you know, two or, you know, four conversations a day. Right. And one of them is going to result in booking a meeting and that's what I need to hit my, my monthly or quarterly number or whatever. So that, um, that is what we want to show to people because a lot of times it's a black box. And if you set this up right, it, it should actually motivate people to, to do the right amount of activity, whether that's 50 or 100 calls or 10 calls. It's, it's making it a science and not just saying, hey, you know, you should make a lot of calls because that's what I did back in the day. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it's also you can get lost in it because not every lead is the same. Not every call is the same. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of taking, not taking into consideration all the nuances of sales, you know, oh, a- activity, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta work. Right. And that's true. And there's no, no getting around that, but you know, th- the idea well, of a science to it, I think is pretty ambitious. Don't you think? Or Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's, the, the honest truth to it is that it's a way to give people a wide berth, but set iron, iron boundaries, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's saying, Hey, you know, the, the reporting is telling us if you make 50 calls that it'll result in, you know, a, a meeting a day, right. Based on, on this, you know, like you said, sh- sh- you know, science that might be, you know, imperfect. And there's all kinds of elements that go into that, right. The warmth of the lead, but Hey, like in aggregate, this is what it looks like. So, um, you should at least <laughs> be working towards this, um, you know, this this particular daily metric yeah. because it's going to give you enough at bats to get there, um, and and the rest is baked in, right? The uh, the difference in warmness and once you have this this these kind of metrics, um, you can actually dig into what's going on. So that's what I wanted to talk about next was the success rate. So um, once you are recording, you know, which calls are successful, uh, like resulting in a meeting booked or you know a follow up meeting or a discovery call. Um, you can see, you know, who's more successful and and that it really depended on the rep. Um, And and the question is why, right? You know, if you're making it, you know, to your point, if you're making these calls and, um, you know, some, you know, there, there's all kinds of elements that that go into um, determining, you know, how, how effective they are, whether it's, you know, a warm lead or cold lead, you know, what's, what's actually going on here. And if you are recording these calls, you can start to actually tease out uh, the coaching side. Yeah. So if you have a rep that's doing enough activity, 
but you know they're not getting successes you know w- w- what's going on so then we look at the the call recording information so um i'm going to pause there just in case like there, there's a question before we kind of dovetail into into that piece and, and what you should look for on the recording side but i think that's where we're going to get um, yeah. some real insights here no, i think that's the much more powerful thing because that can't be gamed right yeah you know absolutely even though I've worked at companies where they dialed the movie theater 30 times before they went home just to get their dials in. (laughs) Right. And and you're like, and, and, but the manager was happy, you know, because it it all looked pretty in the CRM and, and that's kind of, that's why I love the quality side of it because that's the only thing that matters. You know, if they got three meetings a day and they only made nine calls a day, does it matter? You know, because it worked, right? Right. Right. But maybe that, you know, maybe that person's not being fully utilized. So with, with some, with some coaching, you know, we can make sure that they're being highly effective and that we're, we're utilizing, uh, the, you know, that individual to their full potential. So when we look at, when we dig into the, into the, uh, into the data, we look at the success rate and let's say we've got a rep who, um, is making enough calls to, to appease the, the science, right? They're making their fifty dollars or whatever has been determined, you know, to, to you know to be the correct number to, to work the funnel. Um, but they're not successful. We look at the recordings and if it, it, you, you start seeing symptoms. So if it's a short call duration, you know, maybe the rep's really struggling with their call opener, right? They're 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 not opening up a cold call the right way and they need coaching on that. Or on the other side, if they have super long call durations, but there's no meetings coming out of it, you know, maybe they're struggling for the meeting. So that's where you can start uh, seeing trends across your team on the people who are struggling. And that can inform uh, the kind of training that you want to build next. So you're starting to bring the science and the data from from just from just call metrics into your into your ongoing training framework so that you can triage uh, um, the issues that are, are going to have the biggest impact for your team when, when you roll up fixes. And, and what have been those things on, what do you look for on the call that really stick out as, okay, this is the problem. Yeah. The durations honestly are, are probably, um, the biggest, the biggest thing, right? Because if, if somebody's getting, um, enough connects throughout a day, if they're it, like, let's say we need at least, you know, eight connects to get, for real conversations and and they have something like 10, 12, 15 connects, but all of the durations are really short. That tells me that this person, you know, is getting people on the phone, but they're just absolutely bombing <laughs> most likely when, when they're starting. And there's probably something that needs to be reworked on the opener. And if I look and I see that as a broader trend across the team, well, it means we need to retrain people on how to open up a cold call. And what after that? Let's say the call is a good duration, but there's no close. Yeah, same same thing. Um, I've I've seen both with reps where you know they ramble on for you know twelve fifteen minutes on on an initial call. They have a great conversation with the person, but they fail to create some kind of urgency or interest in taking a next step. They get tons of information from the person, but but they don't really you know see the point in in taking a demo or. Um, you know, any kind of meaningful next step that again, you know, translates to coaching in the fact that we need to, to teach them how to create urgency and, and perhaps even, uh, you know, schedule a meeting properly. Yeah. Have you used gong or anything to, to automate that process or kind of consolidate it? Yeah. At previous, uh, at my previous company, we used exec vision, which yeah. really helped, uh, with this process, but there's, you know, there's uh, gong of course, you know, which is, um, you know, I haven't used it firsthand, but I, I've heard that it's a, you know, a fine tool for doing that. And, um, this is how you can connect some of your Salesforce metrics, right? The, assuming that you build this framework to your usage of a tool like that and really make it uh, much more effective. Yeah. Because that's it. You can kind of like both get the transcript and the talk to listen ratio and, you know, kind of the red flags of good calls versus bad calls, uh, questions, you know, next steps, um, kind of those things automatically so that you don't have to go listen through each call. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and I think the, the biggest piece that, uh, is key to success with using a tool like that is getting a a scorecard in place. So, 
you know, we're, we're, we're talking about the opener and the closing, those should be pieces on your scorecard, right? Um, you know, if, if I remember correctly at when we were using, a you know, exec vision, right in the past, um, and I know you can do this on the other tools too. So it's, it's tool agnostic, right? You, uh, for us, it was having an opener, uh, a transition and qualification, you know, some kind of interest building, uh, we had an optional objection handling, a scorecard piece if objections happen to come up, uh, and then next steps and, and scheduling. So that those were the pieces that we rated on a particular call. So once I detect an anomaly in the reporting, you know, we'd go in and do a scorecard and listen to it. So the rep gets feedback uh, on what went wrong. They get a score. And then um, each of those uh, scorecard pieces uh, corresponded to a training that we had done as a team. Uh, so we were able to refer them back. Hey, you need to go review <laughs> the the slide deck and the recording from our training on how to open a call. Or if it was serious enough, we would do a refresher as a team and, and connect that back to that scorecard. Yeah, because I would think that those metrics, and I've, I've been talking to Gong about this, that are so much more valuable than the the, the activity metrics. Not not that the, you don't need both. Of course, you need both, and uh, how good a call is, even if it's successful, it may not have been done very, you know, you get an inbound person. It doesn't matter what the salesperson says. The inbound person wants information, probably wants to take action. Uh, so the outbound, you really want that kind of quality and, you know, tuning that, I think that's much more of a valuable science. Oh yeah. Like it, it, it absolutely is. I think, um, if you're a leader, the, 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 the value of, of measuring your activities, uh, with, with this funnel and, and understanding it is that you can connect. Um, I, I like to think of it as like the battlefield metrics, right? Like, you know, how many, you know, calls were made in a day, how many connects were made in a day to the more valuable science of what's actually happening on the call, because you can't review every single call. No. If you're, if you're, if you're a leader, even if you're managing managers, you know, they, they can't look at every single one of them, but if you've got, uh, your reporting setup, right? You can monitor the symptoms of what's happening and then dig in deep with a tool like Gong. And that's it because I'm sure you've interviewed a ton of salespeople and I talk to salespeople all day and th there's the classic issues. You know, there's the talking over, there's the talking too much, not selling the pain versus selling the product. And these are things that take take people a long time to get over and adjust to. And if they don't get immediate feedback, that's impartial. And that's kind of why I like, you know, having a product or an AI do it versus a manager, you know, because if you, when the manager does it, the rep goes, oh, the manager doesn't like me. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, the AI doesn't like you or dislike you. It, it, it goes against an algorithm and historical data. Yeah. And that's, that, that's why I think having an AI or something that can surface call insights for the majority of the calls is, is great. Uh, but when you when you've got these major red flags showing up in your reporting that, hey, this person is making the number of calls that they should be, according to, you know, our funnel math, yeah. uh, they're getting, you know, more connects than they should be, but they're not getting any success. It's it sets off the alarm bells to, hey, maybe we should dig in on on the call um, coaching tool and find out, you know, what what's there. You know, because if, if you're if it if it's something like Gong where it's got an element of AI that should be prodding them along in the right direction and, and giving them some coaching, but that's still not sinking in, maybe there's maybe there's a, a training error even, right? You know, I want to know as as a man as a manager, you know, what, what's what's going on? Yeah. Did we train this person wrong? Um, is there some bigger issue here? Did we train the team wrong? And this is you know, um, something that's going to affect everybody and, and get ahead of that. So I'm, I'm always trying to think about the implications down the line of, of a, of a, you know, a particular training session or, or just change to our, our calling process and how that can affect, uh, everything. So that's where I think the value is on this, uh, between connecting your, your funnel math and, and metrics to, uh, your actual coaching process and whether or not you're using a tool for that. Um, I, I still think it's uh, going to be super valuable. Cool. And give us a sense of what uh, type of sale you have. Do you get a lot of inbound leads or is it 100 percent outbound trying to you know, go after ideal personas? What, what's it like? 
Yeah, so we're account based here, so it's quite a, a quite a bit of it is outbound. We sell across all segments, so we see uh, we see a bit of everything. But a uh, majority of our SDRs are focused on larger accounts, so it's it's a lot of outbound. Um, we do get inbound, but it's the the focus um, you know is breaking into into big deals and and uh, and starting a conversation. And, and who's that persona? Is it an IT person? Is it a manager? It's a DevOps for us. Okay. So we're a, you know, we're a cloud monitoring solution. Yep. So, you know, it, you know, every, every company is becoming cloud native. It's, there's just a tidal wave happening. And, um, you know, if you think about, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, with server racks, <laughs> you know, how it was back then and, you know, how, how over that time there was the shift to the cloud and people were in a mix, you know, now we're in the era of cloud native. Yeah. They need a tool that's that's going to monitor their their you know cloud infrastructure. So that's that's what we provide to our customers. And the the person who cares about that is the is is DevOps and um, you know engineering leadership. Now, are, are they phone friendly? I wouldn't think so. But so you'd be surprised. Yeah. Um, you know, there there is a big uh, component to uh, personalized outreach on on emails. That that definitely is a major component. You know, they they prefer that. But if you reach out on the phone. And you're doing it in a way that is going to make you human and it's going to be personalized and not a waste of their time. Uh, you know, just like it, I, th I think any buyer persona respects that if, you, if you're doing a good job with it. And we've had a lot of success. I would say the majority of our, uh, you know, meetings and, and next steps are, are done over the phone. Um, but we, you know, obviously we employ a, uh, um, you know, multi, multi-touch approach, you know, with email and calling and social uh, it's not just, uh, you know, dialing down the list. And how far have you gotten to implement your process? I mean, you've been there only two months. That's not much time. You still must be in the process of getting it implemented. You know, I, I think it was what it's, uh, I, I think Reed Hoffman said that, you know, when you do a startup or you join, join a startup, it's, it's like jumping off a cliff and trying to build the airplane on your way down. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's like that. So we're, we're in flight. You know, we've we've got uh, we've got it going. Um, we're starting to tease out insights and make make improvements, and, um, and you know we're doing it very quickly. But yeah, you know it, it's still uh, it's still going to take time to to get it perfect. But I'm confident that we'll we'll get there. And I've got a great team that I'm working with, um, and uh, and that definitely makes it a lot easier. And give us a sense of what that looks like. How many reps do you have? Managers? Have you divided them up into SMB and enterprise or? Yeah. So right now we've got, uh, nine people and we're, we're hiring a few more here in our San Mateo office. Uh, we've got a person in uh, the UK and, and we're recruiting for, uh, Australia as well. And we're segmented, you know, between field and then inside seller uh, support. So we've got some reps that are helping our field, uh, you know, enterprise folks, and then others that are focused on, uh, you know, in, on the inside team. And we're we're looking to uh, keep growing, and I'm I'm recruiting like crazy right now. Yeah, I bet that's not easy in San Mateo. <laughs> no, am I wrong? <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, it's uh, it, it can be a challenge, but um, you know, I I think that our value our value that our company is providing is compelling enough that yeah, you're it, in a it gets space. people excited. Yeah, I know that space pretty well. Uh, I was on the board of a company in that space on the services side, not on the software side. Um, describe your ideal, uh, candidate. So if they're listening, they can get in touch with you. Yeah. I, um, you know, I, I, first and foremost, I want somebody who's coachable. I think that that's probably the most important, uh, uh, thing that I look for in a SDR candidate. And that's because they're the tip of the spear. You know, when you're having that conversation, if, if something needs to be changed, we've got to fix it quickly and you have to take the feedback and apply it because, you know, <laughs> that's the first impression a future customer is going to get. Uh, I would say intellectual curiosity is th is the next one. Looking for somebody who's going to ask uh, the deeper business questions and not just survey somebody and qualify them, but actually care about the problem that you know this prospect or future customer is going to solve. Uh, and then the last big one, I, I I think that this goes for you know this is not going to be a surprise for somebody is is just grit. You know, somebody that you know wants to work hard, uh, understands what the job is. And, and wants to do it because they're confident that they can succeed and move up. And, and that's who we're looking for. Somebody that wants to break into technology sales, break into the space, um, and, and move up into, a, into an account executive role in a year and change. So that's what I'm looking for. And 
um, you know, if, if that's you, I want you to reach out to me. Cool. Any mandatory prerequisites, degrees, location, years experience? Yeah, you know, um, we've got a lot of new grads on the team. So people that have graduated, just graduated from school, uh, you know, are fine. We've got a, a few others that have, have some experience. And um, yeah, you got to be in the Bay Area. Yeah, cool. And how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, you can shoot me an email at cbryson at signalfx.com or uh, connect with me uh, with a hopefully a personalized message after, you know, talk, <laughs> we're, we're talking about sales development. Um, so so lead with your, you know, best uh, foot here, um, you know, over on LinkedIn. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. I love talking to other salespeople, especially sales leaders and trying to understand both sides of it because I've been on both sides of it. And, you know, I talked with reps all day and the number one complaint is that managers just want activity uh, and sales reps kind of just want, you know, deals that are fully baked, that are interested and they're moving forward, have clear next steps. The problem is that, especially today, we don't get that many of them. So we have to do the cold outreach. And to do that, we have to prioritize the people most likely talk about what they care about and who engage them. So please check that out. Uh, hey, have you looked at CoVideo recently? CoVideo's rocking it. Video email. Now, if you're wondering, like, how do you show somebody, like, a capability of your product, show a video, but make it an email. Can't expect them to go to YouTube and go through a course. you got to give them a little bit, a little teaser, uh, a little example. And it makes for a great follow-up email. Uh, because you can share your screen and show just a one or two minute thing. I have found this to be insanely effective because you have both curiosity and value with it. And people really engage uh, with video much better because it's unique. Uh, I think still very few people are doing it. So it is your competitive advantage this year. So make sure you're checking that out. Also, pipe drive. You got to have a personal CRM. Yeah, I know your company has one, but guess what happens? Uh, they change territories, they get acquired, they shut down, whatever, and all of a sudden, all your data that you put in and invested in is gone. And you're off on your own. You go to your next company, you go, Well, I have my LinkedIn list. And say, Yeah, but there's no phone numbers, there's no email addresses, there's no history or context with it. You got to have your own CRM. And plus they're moving into the enterprise space. So if you, if your company is at, at all open to switch in CRMs, make sure you're checking out PipeDrive. It's by far the easiest to use. You get one month free access to it with Brutal Truth, all one word, coupon code. And you'll see why I've been talking about it for years now. I love it. It's a CRM that I use. Super simple. All my clients, I get them to switch over because people will use it because that's all that matters. If people aren't using the CRM, it, it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter if you have it. So make sure you're checking that out. Eight, make sure you check out the YouTube channel, Brian Burns Sales on YouTube, the courses at b2brevenue.com. There's a free ebook there. Just put in your email address, hit submit. And I send you the link to the book right back to you. And the courses are going up January 31st. Let's talk through them. Let's make the year of excellence. That's an additional course that you get for free by joining the Closing the Complex Sale. So you get, you know, you get the questions course, the Year of Excellence course, and Closing the Complex Sale, all for a low monthly fee. It's not a membership. It's a year-long commitment, commitment to you. You start whenever you want. You get 100% access to all of the content day one, and you get Unlimited coaching, one-on-one -on -one sessions, 30 minutes with me, record it, put into the course. You get office hours every other week, one hour of office hours, Q&A, uh, topic discussions, case studies, all of this. What else do you need? Tell me what else it would take for to get you to the next level. How much are you making this year? How much do you want to make? What's the difference? Let's get you there. Come on. Quit, quit moping. Yeah, you get the territory, you got your comp plan. What? It's up to you now. It's all up to us. Let, let me help you out. <laughs> Come on. So connect up with me on LinkedIn. We'll see you next time. And uh, do you know how to use the show notes? Do you know how to do that? All you have to do is scroll up. 
and you got a little email in there that shows you how to convince your manager to pay for it. Now, I don't want your manager to pay for it. I want you to pay for it because I want you to be committed to doing it every day, not just like, oh, I watched the video and it didn't work for me. Okay, let's get it to work. Let's get committed. Get focused. Make this year your year. I I just feel it. I feel it's going to be a good year. Let's work together. See you next time. At work to get, uh, expand and meet new people, people that could help him with his business, people that help get the word out. And these little efforts, these little things tend to mount up. And we tend to only focus on what is going to close right now. And we should, but we, and when we have other time, we should be focused on what can close sooner or later. And sales is a priority thing. And it may sound, sound contradictory because I'm always talking about, you know, prioritize in the order of closure. And I, I agree with that 100%. But then we have the rest of the day. And the rest of the day, we tend to just go out and try and find totally cold things as opposed to things that we had touched three months ago, six months ago, because timing in sales is so critical. Uh, The people who are in market and active, they come to us. The people that is the real market are people that shouldn't talk to us, but the timing just isn't right. They don't know what we do yet. They're not even curious. Their level of interest hasn't peaked yet. That's our job. And we can't do it directly. If we do it directly, uh, that's a take. That's not a give. What we, and a give, we have to become creative at because we're not used to that. So I, I listened to this episode a couple of times because it, it really is gold. Uh, if you really want to get good at this, start the conversation, get the meeting is for you. It takes your whole addressable market, prioritizes it, and I show you a systematic way of doing this that isn't time-consuming, isn't cold calling, isn't cold emailing. It's organic, it's natural, and it really is a process to what Gary is talking about uh, that it takes the thinking out of it because it's a lot of work if you do it, um, you know, one off every time. But if you have a systematic way of doing it, it's really powerful. If your challenge is you're getting in and talking to people, but the deals are stalling, there's no decision, it's stuck. Uh, you're not really sure where it is or where it has to go. And you just need help. Closing the complex sale is for you. And it's just great for anybody who wants to take their game to the next level. And if if you're the B player that thinks, oh, I know everything, I've done everything, it's the market, that's the problem, it's my territory. Well, that's not the course for you. I don't know what, I think therapy is the course for you. But if you really want to take your game to the next level, including me, and that's why I came up with the year of excellence. What I wanted to do is let, let me document the very best I've seen. Let, let me do the research curate it, condense it into something that reps can take and not have to, oh, read four books on this, five books on that. The problem with that is, yeah, you get a lot of knowledge, but you don't take any action and you forget it and you move forward and you get stuck in the rut. How do you come up with a systematic way within a year, whether you start in January or you start in November, it doesn't matter. You just get into it and get momentum and get what I call compound selling. See, my frustration as a sales rep was I didn't see enough compounding. And I always was obsessed with compound interest ever since I was a kid. And if you want to learn about it, check out uh, Warren Buffett's documentary on HBO. It is pure gold because he was obsessed with it. And the idea is that you don't start like Groundhog Day every day. You build off of every day. You build off of your skills. You become better. You get compound interest. And over time, you get the hockey stick. Now, if you don't do this, you tend to just level off and actually sink because you get burnt out. And I've seen too many of my friends later in their career, they get burnt out and all that skill kind of goes away because their attitude and their motivation isn't there. They didn't compound. So that's kind of the the theme of a year of excellence. It's going to be included if you sign up for closing the complex sale in January. Uh, You can buy it all at once or there's a payment plan. It's not a subscription. It's not a membership. It's a year-long access. 
uh, to all the content from day one. So you'll get all the office hours that I did in 2018. So 25 hours of that. And you can get one-on-one. So you get a sales coach that's here for you. And if there's something that would make the course enticing for you, let me know. You can schedule a call with me at b2brevenue.com. And make sure you're checking out CoVideo. They've done some incredible work. And this year, if you're not using video email, it is a big mistake. You've got to find a way of connecting up with your audience, being organic and natural and authentic. And that's the way to do it. It's different. It's new. It's not really new, but it's new to you. It's going to be new to a lot of your customers, and it's going to be the way to really engage with your marketplace. And you're just going to miss out if you're not doing it. So check that out at covideo.com. Appreciate everybody listening. We'll see you next time.